Although they would never admit it out loud, prior to the launch of the Ryzen 1000 series, many RIBs considered AMD's processors as almost second-class citizens. And, honestly, comparing the quality of boards against the higher-end Intel boards, there was an obvious disparity in the build quality. However, this is something that has been rectified since the tremendous success of the original Ryzen 1000 series, and certainly now the Ryzen 3000 series is selling like, well, hotcakes. But, there is one problem, of course, with the X570 boards, which was released alongside the Ryzen 3000 series CPUs, and that is that the X570 for the entry-level boards is often considerably more expensive than what we saw with, let's say, the X300 series. Enter Biostar's X570 GTA, which is released under their racing brand of motherboards. So this motherboard aims to reduce the cost of the X570 chipset by providing a kind of entry-level board, but still provides crucial features such as PCIe Generation 4. So my name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, we're going to be investigating just if Biostar have succeeded with this particular product, or whether you should just leave it on the shelf and instead go with, say, a B450 motherboard or save your pennies and go for one of the more expensive X570 boards. I'll also say that Biostar sent this product over for the purposes of review. However, this is not sponsored content. All opinions are our own. But I like to disclose that because I think it's, uh, well, just fair to you as the viewer. Also, Biostar are not as well known as board vendors such as Asus, MSI, EVGA, and so on and so on in the West. So the United States, uh, Europe, we don't really see many Biostar boards. However, in Asia, this is totally different, and they are a pretty well-respected brand in the likes of China. But Biostar are looking to expand their market, and I have to say that I have reviewed Biostar boards in the past. I've reviewed a 300 and a 400 series board, and they have performed admirably. So let's see if things continue with the X570 GTA. And yes, I am aware of the amusing name. The board layout is pretty basic. Dark colouring with light highlights streaking over the PCB. The colour scheme of the Biostar X570 GTA won't surprise anyone who's seen previous racing boards from the company before. There is also no power or reset switch soldered onto the board, and there's no RGB present on the board either, although it does have two LED headers for both 12 and 5 volt. I was initially concerned by the frankly small, weedy-looking chipset fan, thinking it could be noisy. But fortunately, this was not the case. It's virtually silent in operation, surprisingly so, actually. The board sports support for four sticks of memory, rated up to speeds of 4000+, plus, and there's a single PCIe 4 slot, times 16 of course, along with several PCIe 3 slots, and for storage, there's six SATA 3 ports, and a single M2 slot, which has a heat spreader on it as well. That's a PCIe Gen 4. For internal I.O., there's support for four USB 2 headers, four USB 3.1s, a single 8-pin EPS connector for the CPU, and of course the power connector as well, the 24-pin. A lack of fan headers is noticeable though, and there's no dedicated pump header, with only a single CPU fan connector and a single system fan as well. Well, Technically, there is a second system fan connector, but that's taken up by the Southbridge fan, so it's not really available. The rear I.O. is pretty bare bones as well. A keyboard port, HDMI, VGA, LAN, which is taken care of with the RTL8111H, up to 1000 megabytes per second. Four USB 3.1 Gen 1s two USB 2s, and the usual three audio janks for 7.1 audio, uh, which is provided by the ever-trusty ALC887 audio codec. Despite the I.O. being limited on this board, the performance, as we'll cover soon, is right on par with what you would expect for an X570 class motherboard. The motherboard is outfitted with 10 phases, though it's in a 4 plus 2 combination. The four phases for the CPU are doubled. 
This basically means that it reduces temperatures and provides slightly more po stable power than a regular four phase design. However, it's not a true 8 plus 2. This would be much more expensive to produce. This was likely a very necessary compromise given the price point of the board. Going deep into the phases and power is a bit outside the scope of this review, but in general, think of it this way. If you're pairing the board with a Ryzen 5 3600 or a Ryzen 3700X, then likely you'll have no issues at all. However, if you're going to crank the clock frequencies up of a Ryzen 9 3950X, that's probably not going to be a good idea with this board. But honestly, pairing any 140 US dollar motherboard with a 700 plus US dollar CPU is never something we'd recommend, regardless of the manufacturer. Now that we've had a look over the board itself, let's take a look at some of the benchmarks. We're going to be using the X570 GTA and pairing it with a Ryzen 7 3700X, which we have purchased thanks to your generous support on Patreon. We're also pairing this with 32GB of crucial ballistic memory, we're clocking it to 3200MHz, and this is with 4 sticks of 8GB each. Now you may say that that doesn't really necessarily seem like a configuration that would be for a budget user. After all, most budget users would probably opt for 2 sticks of 8GB, meaning 16GB total, and only 2 so uh, slots excuse me, used up, and you would be 100% right. However, who knows what the landscape is going to look like for PC gaming in, let's say, 6 months, 12 months, or even 18 months. And I don't think it hurts any to uh, test this board with uh, 4 uh, sticks of memory in it, and then we can obviously see if there are any potential problems that you may face. We're also going to be testing this particular motherboard with an RTX 2080 Ti. Now I do realise once again that an RTX 2080 Ti is probably not something that the vast majority of people would pair with this motherboard. Uh, they would probably go with let's say an RTX 2060 or a um, RX 5700 for example, but given in 6, 12 and certainly 18 months cards are going to be available on store shelves which are in the mid-range and probably outperform the RTX 2080 Ti, I don't think it's an unreasonable option. Plus, there's the other thing of, well, it would allow the CPU to stretch its legs. Oh, and I would also point out that the RTX 2080 Ti, much like the 3700X, has been purchased thanks to your generous help on Patreon, so do know that anything you do uh, donate on Patreon it does help us uh, keep up to date with equipment. For gaming, we'll be sticking to a mixture of 1080 and 1440p, as even with our RTX 2080 Ti, we will see a slight bottleneck in 4K, meaning the results of this resolution are largely pointless. What is there to say here with the RTX 2080 Ti throwing frames left, right and centre? The 3700X behaves like, well, a Ryzen 7 3700X should in the Biostar X570 GTA board. Any frame rate variances inside the margin of error, and the board handles both the CPU and GPU perfectly. Switching to synthetic and content creation workloads, applications like the Cinebench R20 run and Corona continue the same trend as we saw in gaming. With the Ryzen 7 3700X anyway, Biostar's board handles things just perfectly. As for audio tests and I.O., they don't quite match up to MSI's much more expensive option, but audio, for example, is more than acceptable for most users of the Biostar board. So then, if you are a regular viewer, you may frown and say, well, this review is a little bit faster than normal. Typically, motherboard reviews from you can take like 20 minutes. And you would be right. However, this is one of those boards where I went into it with some uncertainty, honestly. I was tickled at the idea of a cheaper uh, X570 board. However, the fact that it was so cheap also raised some alarm bells. Namely, would it explode when I put the 3700X in? Well, of course, I am slightly uh, exaggerating here, but you kind of get my point. Would the board perform how you would expect? And honestly, no matter what workload we put the uh, motherboard under, it performed perfectly. 
It is the cheapest X570 motherboard available on the market right now, at least according to my quick Google. And that isn't to say that it's perfect for every user. The fact that, for example, it only has one M.2 slot could prove to be a problem if you're someone who needs lots of storage. This is not the board for you if you want to pair it with a Ryzen 9 3950X or a 3900X and then heavily overclock it and then have like a content creation uh, workstation with like 2 million hard drives. That just is not going to work for you with this board. But if you are a gamer primarily or maybe do a little bit of content creation, you want a couple of uh, SSD drives which are SATA interfaces and also an M.2 drive because after all we don't know how the next generation of consoles is going to impact the creation of PC games and potentially M.2 uh, M drives are going to be of paramount importance for gaming with certain titles over the next few years. We'll have to wait and see on that one. Either way, if you want the option of PCIe 4 and you are on a budget, then this is a nice motherboard for you. It lacks some of the features of the higher end boards, but it's stable. We had no problems with the BIOS. It's pretty functional actually with the BIOS. It obviously is not as comprehensive as like one of the higher end boards, such as the X570 Ace from MSI. But then again, you're looking at a buffer board, which is considerably more expensive. Overall, in this price range, it does butt heads against some of the nicer B450 motherboards. And there is certainly an argument to be made to go with a B450 motherboard over this. What's the better option? Well, unfortunately, I can't really tell you that. That's down to you and your scenario. If you feel that PCIe 4 could be useful for your particular build in the future, and we don't know once again how, let's say, next generation graphics cards are going to utilize PCIe 4 and how games are going to use PCIe 4, given, once again, the next generation consoles in the next 12 months. It could be nice, particularly given the next generation of Ryzen processors, Ryzen 4000 as well, will most likely uh, fit very well in this board, then maybe that could be a potential option. On the other hand, if those aren't features that you particularly care about, particularly if the B450 board offers decent storage solutions as well, then maybe that would be the better option for you. I have no particular qualms recommending this board for someone who wants a cheap entry-level X570 board. I would just say that it doesn't have any amazing standout features other than the fact it's way more stable and quieter than what I anticipated. Uh, ran absolutely flawlessly with every single test, the performance was bang on with the referenced system that we have, which is an MSI X570 board, and it ran with even four sticks of memory perfectly, honestly. The only major problem is that it does lack some of the I.O. and some of the features, such as lots of uh, CPU fan headers. RGB support is, well, it's on the board, but the board itself doesn't light up like a Christmas tree, so that may be something that you kind of uh, find irksome. And the fact that, and I know I keep repeating this, but the fact it only has one M.2 slot. With all of that said, though, it's a pretty damn nice board for the price. With all of that said, though, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you did, then please consider subscribing to the channel for many more reviews which will be upcoming, including, well, you can see one of them in the background there, although there'll be several others that will also be popping up with lots of investigation. And I will hopefully see you soon. So take care of yourselves. Bye for now.